Uh, let me uh, walk you through. I wanted to talk about how FinTech and BAN uh, can collaborate together. Um, I'm going to be like the man in the middle. Um, so today we're going to cover four things. You know, what is the difference between the culture, the product, the technology, and the mindset between uh, FinTech and banks? First, uh, where is the current culture in, in banking? You know, we know that uh, mobile has changed everything. Nowadays, we spend more than three hours per day on looking at the little screen we hold in our pockets. And then we have the problem with the clicker. Yeah, sorry. So yeah, uh, banking is changing, and, and, and banks and fintech again has has to change. You know, we need to go from the old school banking to go to open open spaces. Let's see if we can work this out. Yeah. Um, so no matter what, how do you dress? You know, we should be uh, working, and we're going through a massive uh, cultural shift. You know, going from a close relationship, going open sharing data, working with other departments, getting rid of silos, um, be collaborative with other banks and, and other uh, companies, kind of getting rid of um, layers. And one of the things that uh, Netflix has on these uh, five points uh, culture manifesto is to avoid rules. You know, like, let's get rid of some rules. OK. Yeah. yeah, one of the things, you know, like lately we've been talking about is like um, our banking products going to be commoditized in the, in the next open banking area. You know, the phase one of uh, banks and fintech it was when uh, fintech were just focusing on becoming the, the face of banking, just a nice front UX design, uh, but nothing else, you know, everything else was uh, not provided by then. So it was like a lim limited uh, functionality that FinTech back then, like simple or moving, were doing this like amazing UX experience, but nothing else. There were no products, no services, just like how to manage your finances. Then became phase two between 2015, uh, probably this year and the next one, where some fintech are getting banking license, they are providing some of the banking products internally or externally through uh, partnerships. So we have seen how the Revoluts, the N26, all the Starlings are working with other startups to come and bundle on the banking service. So providing everything from payments to credit cards, to um, insurance on the go. So I have uh, a lot of um, cool examples. And then next phase I can kind of project is like how banks are gonna become uh, very challenged in the next few years when you know FinTech will have a banking license, they will provide everything that the customer not, uh, wanted to, to use. And one of the things I wanted to talk is, you know, how do we spot the difference between what a banking is offering me and the fintech it's offering me right now? Yeah, let's see a couple of examples. You know, for many years since, you know, the credit card started, uh, banks, they just mailed the new credit card in a, uh, a very transactional letter full of, you know, like details of the legal disclaimer. Suddenly, you know, in 2011, this simple company in the U.S. kind of uh, changed how transactional mails can become one of the brand experience, and how others like Monzo or lately Revolut, where the titanium car, they just redesign how cards are delivered to customers. But this is not the, the last. Um, you know, how many times we have received one of these great cars you know, uh, the, vert uh, the horizontal um, landscape uh, cards with the, um, to swipe, 
when you don't use Swipe anymore. So we just put in the car. So that's why, you know, one of the cool things, you know, uh, the FinTech were thinking, like, if you are now putting the car with it using the chip, how we know should, you know, take upside down the car and, and completely redesign how cards are designed. Other examples, you know, social media, you know, Monzo, uh, uh, Community Maya is one of the best in the, in the market. Um, one customer was like, I have a handover, what should I do? The guy was super good, like, you know, take a rest, you know, take a bloody Murray. You know, like how social media can become one of the strongest and one of the most important channels where you can interact, you know, face to face with your customers, especially when you're, you don't have any branches where you have no physical presence, social media can become one of the most um, important channels for, for fintech and banks. Other example, you know, how fintech and some banks are thinking over and now not to punish uh, customers, you know, if you're going overdraft, if you're spending your money abroad, like giving you examples of how you can better manage your finances. Technology. You know, we have seen in the last few years, you know, how technology have changed everything, you know, have swipe out everything, you know, new business models. You know, on this image, it's, I really like, you can see, you know, the old fashioned way of, you know, doing one live with uh, journalists, another two guys, and one just lady using their, her iPhone, she was streaming, you know, whatever she was uh, so saying about um, the Congress in Spain. A few examples, you know, how the old Cobol, all mainframes, all architecture is being disrupted by the stripes, but the, the um, Amazon Web Service, the cloud, you know, new technologies allowing new, new startups to be created in a very quick way. Meanwhile, banks has to deal with this kind of legacy system, you know, a lot of system, a lot of connection, a lot of people, a lot of um, uh, things that need to uh, take care. Uh, meanwhile, other ones are doing very fast. Like who? Like Atom Bank. You know, in 2017, they put it on, on Twitter, they approve a uh, mortgage in under 22 minutes. One customer using their mobile app was requesting a mortgage, and in 22 minutes, it was approved. Meanwhile, you can see here in the graph, you know, more than 75% of the mortgages in the UK uh, needs more than 30 days to be approved. You know, this is how banking is being redefined. How many times we have seen a very old-fashioned, very unrelated terms in our transaction history, we don't know what is this, you know? Suddenly those uh, new startups are just translating, you know, the banking terminology into our day. You know, it's, it's Netflix, and you've seen it's El Corte Inglés, it's uh, Amazon, it's Spotify. I wanted to see their logo here, and I don't care about, you know, what is the ultimate name that is in the transaction. 70% of a Formula One car, it's being completely redesigned during the season. The same happened with the banking, you know, 25, 27 um, is the average iOS updates for fintech and challenger banks, only 10 for incumbents. So are you providing the right experience? Are you creating new products and services on time? Last year we saw it was all over the news, you know, Lloyd, but you know, some geolocalization of transactions. It was like, wow, we featured these, you know, we're using Google. But it was a feature developed back in 2011, but simple. You know, like incumbent banks are having a hard time to come up and, the, and um, create some features that, you know, FinTech can take just a few months to develop. But what is the difference? You know, that there is a, ma a different mindset between two, the two. You know, you can see how the incumbent banks, they have this head of digital transformation. 
head of innovation, head of data, head of customer experience. Why in a fintech there is no such a title, titles there, you know, because all of them, they are thinking about how we can innovate. All of them, they're using data. All of them are thinking about the customer experience. And then they have other problems. You can see, you know, there is a BP of pro a growth, head of products, partnerships. So we can see, you know, where is the difference and, and the gap between these two. Why? Because, you know, different scenarios, you know, incumbent banks have been here forever and spending a lot of years getting millions and millions of customers. But what happened with these companies, suddenly in a few months, or a couple of years, you know, they can scale super quick and super cheap. Recently, um, FT Partners um, released a, a Challenger Bank report where you can see you know, how many traction they have got these new Challenger Banks all over the Europe, Asia, and South America. And collaboration is key. You know, a couple of images, it was German banks you know, collaborating with FinTech in April 2016. You know, less than two years later, you can see how many banks are realizing that you know if you need to comply and if you keep up with the pace that the customer are demanding new service and products, you need to keep uh, collaborating with fintechs. There are many options, you know, bank as a platform, bank as a service. You know, there are like a bunch of questions that banks and fintech should mass collaborate together and help them, you know, to grow. You know. We have seen like BBVA was uh, opening the back as a platform in the US, but it's also thinking up about creating back as a service. So we can see how banks need to develop new strategies to keep their growth. And this is my last statement, you know. I wanted to say, you know, the future of banking is not bank about and, and fintech, you know, one or another. It's the both of them together. You know, we need to collaborate, we need to work with uh, together, and we need to become, you know, partners where the best of the two worlds can collaborate together. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, David.